For this is the province of combat, and these are the faces of war. Check this out. You've got mail. Oh, yeah. Okay, all flight controllers, go to go for landing. Retro, go. Rhino, go. Titan, go. Control, go. Falcom, go. GNC, go. Econ, go. Surgeon, go. Capcom, we're go for landing. We're back for another Thirsty Thursday. I'm 50 Cal Barrett, and joining me today, live from an underground bunker, i.e. his parents' basement, it's Steve Mongler. And Steve, what an honour it is that you've taken time off your busy schedule to join us today. Uh, yeah, well, thanks. It is... Oh, you're most welcome. Yeah. Most welcome. Map today, Semwa, and we've got uh, Magpie versus Silence, or as they are, uh, I think, uh, in-game, I need Ko, two as Silence, and Magpie might be Umsum's baby. Or it's the other way around. Doesn't matter, I don't know who they are. What do you think? What do you think, Steve? Semwa, big game. Man, I, I have to say, I, I, I'm a huge fan of this map, this level. It's awesome. I just, it's, this is, for me, quintessential Company of Heroes game map design. Is it? I don't know. It's I love it. And what could be more quintessential than vanilla? Wehrmacht versus the, uh, the US. We don't have any of the PE or Brits cluttering up the space. I'm quite excited. Quite excited. Um, just let me un-alt tab for a second and bring the game up. Yep, it's <laughs> it's going. Sweet. You're now I'm even more excited. Watching watching some some porn. That's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah, it was a good guess. Well, that's, good guess. that's why I've, first time. That's why I've got two screens. It's, uh... <laughs> so so tell me, Steve. Um, some more. You are an expert, um, <laughs> both at the art of Company of Heroes and um, in particular, some more Americans. Um, versus normal expert AI or hard AI. Either way, uh, I think I'm I'm safe in saying that you have the qualifications to give us a, a, a kind of insight into what to expect from a from a game of such caliber. So, <laughs> what would you be expecting uh, at this point? Well, first of all, I'm actually I just want to say thanks for for saying expert AI, even hard AI. That's thank you. It's a big confidence booster. I mean, this level, right? It takes it is we've got this. This awesome church overlooking the middle vic uh, middle victory point. I just I just f I feel like this level is really reminiscent of a lot of World War II movies. I mean churches recurring theme. Uh, and movies. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot there. Do it. Church, Jesus Christ, war, his crucif crucifixion. Uh, go your thoughts. I think you summed it up. You did. Also earlier, I want to say yes. The you said the art of Company of Heroes, and you're right. I think. The, it is an art to play in the game. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. I, um, I mean, I guess in my free time, I actually, uh, I was going to say, sculpt, I actually draw, draw, draw art in uh, Microsoft Paint, um, and then I, I sell my art online. Uh, granted, I, I pose as a five-year-old um, with cerebral palsy. Um, do you, I mean, but you know, it, 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 it helps sales. It helps sales. Do you pose? Do you pose as that, or do you just run with it when people assume that's the? I don't know. It's anyway. an embarrassing story, Steve. Can I, I? I don't want to go into it now. We're. I think we're watching a game of. I think we're watching a game of Company Heroes. But can, yeah. Oh shit. Oh shit. What? And that's a new record. Three minutes. Three minutes thirty. We haven't really talked oh, about much. Good. I um, want to talk about quickly. What time are you at? Um, I'm at 3:38. Oh, thank God, sweet. Because I, I screwed up. I accidentally paused and then I sped up. But you know, we're we're on board. It's my internal clock. I skill. think it's biological clock is that that's what people call it. It's on. It's on to it. It's Thursday, Thursday. I'd imagine again, your right? biological clock would probably be near near the end, wouldn't it? By now. How old are you? <laughs> I just choked a little on on what I'm drinking, <laughs> and we haven't talked about drinking, have we? Let's talk about drinking. Let's talk about drinking. It's Thirsty Thursday. It's thirsty Thursday. I imagine, I mean, we're, we're four minutes into the game, but I feel that this game will still be going probably for another half an hour, 40 minutes. We have plenty of time to talk about the game. Let's talk about alcohol, because uh, at this point, I'm going to be running low. Seven Oaks, uh, you might remember last week, it was, it was Jim Bean Bourbon. Um, but after spending all of my, um, my dole money on a single bottle of alcohol and only having one meal that week, I, I realized I probably had to, to downgrade to something... Probably uh, less flavoursome, but uh, just as effective in, in helping me think straight. So, uh, yes, I have uh, Seven Oaks bourbon. Nice, Delicious. Nice. 
mixed with cherry cherry coke. I also. Uh, but it's German cherry coke, so it tastes very much like the Holocaust. <laughs> All right, we'll cut that out. We'll cut that out. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> we have a sniper, an American sniper, on the field, and I think <laughs> oh, I think God. his name, as as, as uh, for anyone who's new, we name we name snipers and other mainly snipers. Snipers are fun to name. Bobby Joe, right? Bobby Joe, that's a classy American name. He sounds like he's from Texas. Are you Probably is. It's and in the face of adversity, step. he turns and runs. But I think that's crucial. I think uh, running away from adversity and and the war in general is an effective strategy. Yeah. It looks like the the Wehrmacht basically pushed basically pushed all the uh, U.S. forces except for some behind enemy lines. I I have not been paying attention. Rifle. There are four Volksgrenadier squads, four yeah. Volk squads, and you, a fifth one on the way. This is an interesting strategy from. Uh, Silence slash magpie slash I need Koto slash Umsum's baby. One of them. They, uh, and you can tell, you can see it in the eyes of these Volks that they, they want it bad. You know, they're eager to prove themselves. They're Volks Grenadiers, right? Yeah, um, and I think Volks Grenadiers are traditionally made up of children and old men. Oh, we've, oh Jesus Christ, dude. We, we have a second sniper on the field. Like, that's another name we have to. What, what's his name? You name him. I named the last one. Bobby Joe, if you can remember. I can't. I Renfield. Can't. Renfield. Bobby Joe and Renfield. I like that. Renfield. Bobby Joe and Renfield. Well, what, what are your thoughts? Sniper versus um, the clusterfuck of Volksrenders. Well, Bear in mind, a, a Volksrenders costs very little to reinforce. You're not going to be causing much of a manpower drain. So I'd say this is actually quite a clever counter to snipers. Yeah. Then again, I'm not an expert in any sense of the word. We should probably mention that for uh, Oomps Oomps Baby, to be able to build both riflemen and snipers, he's actually gone weapon support and barracks. Not the most common, um, not the most common build. It might slow down his AT capabilities. But the other point is that he actually built two snipers before building an MG. He's got a third on the way, and what's he facing? But a mass of Volksgrenadiers. You know, machine gun fodder. Am I right? Is that is that fair? That's fair. I yeah, you're not fair. wrong. You're I'm not, not wrong. I'm not wrong. And actually. If, uh, if I didn't know better, I'd say that, uh, in fact, this isn't the Wehrmacht, but China, or even Russia, I don't know, just, just the general gist of throwing lots of people at the opposition. Uh, but, I mean, these snipers are already sitting on five kills, three kills, and uh, you said another one just came out of the barracks? Uh, he's well, coming out. He's, he's, he's there. He's, ne he, he's here. He's here. Herman. And how symbolic is that? Birthed into the world. Herman, Bobby Joe, and Renfield. There you go. Okay, I'm I'm not going to keep track of that. You can keep track of that. Okay. Um, Some, someone out there about, will uh, keep track. They can they can call China, us. Russia. This guy's name. I need Kotu. Who? Which, which factions would you like to see in Coming Heroes Two? Me. Obviously Russia. Yeah. I, Russia's in there. You've got the. You know Russia doesn't excite me that much, and um, I don't know why. I I really like the idea of the Russian uh, theater, the snow, the sprawling. Oh, we've got a Goliath on field. Uh, the sprawling kind of the huge tank battles as they had juxtaposed with some pretty, um, you know, what could be some pretty spectacular urban environments, Leningrad, Stalingrad, or whatever. There you go. Uh, mm. Shameless lack of historical knowledge. I was going to say that was a, a fairly a fairly poor use of imagination. You know, I'd like to see uh, Eskimos and Native American Indians kind of get an Assassin's Creed three sort of theme going. Yeah. Um, okay. I think uh, Eskimos should be able to build igloo machine gun nests. I feel that would be yeah. that would add a, a, a needed bit of originality to the game. And we've actually got our first MG coming out. I don't know. Oh, first MG. Yeah. Go on, go on, go on. Very, very heavy support build. Um, I'd be quite excited to see um, uh, sharks, not sharks, uh, the bears, bears fighting for Russia because everyone knows that in uh, in World War Two. Oh my were, god! Oh my god! This could be the greatest thing ever. Sorry. Oh, it didn't happen. Never mind. I stopped you for nothing. Yeah, I thought it was going to happen. It's not going to happen. That would have been great. Herman, I Bobby was, Joe, I was talking about bears and rocket launches. Escapes a Goliath. But that's cool. That's cool. Um, He'll be back. I think that Goliath's going to get him. And um, the Goliath, or as I like to call him, Hans 2000. Have you ever thought that Goliaths actually are probably sentient thinking machines? That you just sent to their desk? They do. I'm pretty sure they, at least it says unit lost, right? When, when one explodes. It makes you think. It doesn't say machine destroyed. It says unit lost. It makes you think. And I just, I just want you to 
the listeners think about that for a few seconds think and about what it. that could possibly mean. Um, for ethics. Ethics? I mean, I, ethics I've is a big thing. Steam. I've run out of steam. I'm going to have a drink. I'm actually going to finish and this off. And, and wha- uh, we'll wha- while you have that drink, up to number one. while you have that drink, why don't we think what... Um, let's think about what... Oh, I'm, crap. There you go. There you You've go. lost it. Let's, I've okay, lost, okay, let's just, just use this time. Right. Uh, let's oh, just quickly have a word from our sponsors. A word from our sponsors. And we're back! Sweet. Um, not much has happened in that intervening period. Um, three snipers still running around. Bobby Joe. Herman and Renfield. And his two friends. Yep, those ones. Uh, we've got quite a bit of mines going down. Um, so, you know, and, and mines are an investment for the future. Future generations. It's a gift that keeps on giving um, yeah. to the children. So, um, <laughs> spend 25 munitions this Christmas. <laughs> Good, I like it. Um... Can't remember something 2000, whatever you called the Goliath, is still lurking around. Um, mm. Maybe going to take out the Shark from the squad. And as you can see, a stationary Goliath is camouflaged in cover. And mm. not so Here much. Here he comes. He wants He's it like, bad. Run, pathetic humans, <laughs> from your robot overlords. Uh, oh, and he pulls back. See, and that's. And what's he playing on here but psychology? You know? He, mm. If he detonates it. Sure, there's losses, but the threat's over. He doesn't detonate it. He's hiding in a bush and now. And Oom's, Oom's baby knows that somewhere out there is a Goliath. Who a Goliath with his name on it. His name on it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, while we have a bit of downtime, while these mass Volks grenadiers go slaughter some engineers, I am drinking the rum, Blackheart rum from last week, except I ran out of Coke. Yes. So I'm drinking it mixed with a tropical... Juice, tropical juice, not a great mix. Mm. But here's here's the thing, right? I thought about pretending to drink this week because I didn't have any coke and I didn't have time to go and get coke because I'm super busy down in the basement. And um, that is it's true. I almost feigned drinking rather than face straight rum. But then I realized mm. that that was cheating, right? That's cheating. And cheating when you cheat, you only cheat yourself. So. Here. That's true, That's and the person that you and the other person that you're cheating, of course. But uh, yeah, but with me, there's actually, never that another goes person. That goes without saying, of course. Yeah, with me, there's never another person. Well, actually, involved. that actually brings me into an interesting topic. I read a I read a scientific um, a scientific research paper. Mm. Science That's is not good. the word. I can't think of it right now. As, a sci- there's well, three science. words. We're going to talk about science for a second. It's um, we're going to launch into a, a new regular part of our series called Science Corner with Fifty Cal and Steve. Well, anyway, I read a paper. Welcome, Do it. welcome, have a seat. Uh, and uh, the paper said that um, men, I don't know about women, I think it was mostly about men, I assumed it's about men, mm-hmm. um, who masturbate, no that's the wrong word, masturbate's the wrong word, who ejaculate more than 300 times a year are likely to live up to four years older than their counterparts. Yeah. So that's, for uh, anyone who's not great at math, that's less than once a day. That is. There you go. So I... Uh, I think by their reasoning, Earth, how, how long would you expect to live, Steve Mongo? You'd probably get 12, well, 16 years over the rest of us? I think, like you said, there, there's a crucial difference between masturbate and ejaculate. So, <laughs> maybe yeah, not as is. long I as think, you'd expect. I th- <laughs> we just saw some I think in this instance... In the this by the way, yeah, anybody by who's the, watching by the, the game, who anyone who decided to watch this for the game, might be might care to know there's an Austin on the field. Okay, well, um, I think we should just have a, a quick update on what's going, and we're gonna and an quickly switch M10 over to our uh, an M10. Well, I'm, I'm just gonna pause you there. I think we're gonna switch over to our European co- um, correspondent coming to us live from the Tower of London. It's Jonesy with a mid-game update. Jonesy, have you ever had a dream that? That you um you had you 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 could you do you would you want you you could do so you 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 could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything. Thanks, Jonesy. Wow. Always insightful. Wow, well said. I, in fact, mm. tear to my eye, tear to my eye. 
And that's what I like about Jonesy. He says the things that we're not able to. You know, we're all thinking it, and he just comes across, and he's like, this happened, and then that happened. And, you know, he's straight to the point. Straight to the point. Oh, um, so we were talking about those mines earlier. Ship. They're being systematically removed by this, by this pioneer squad, um, armed with what looks like a frying pan at the end of a long stick. Yeah, which I can only assume that they use this frying pan to not heat up the mines to a point where they're no longer effective. Not a penis. Not a penis. Also, uh, Oops Oops Baby has gone uh, airborne for his talk. Airborne. Airborne. Yeah. Oh. Got some paratroopers. A lofty in. choice! Touche. Touche. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Also, by the way, yeah. that Goliath before that blew up, I don't think it killed anyone. There you go. No doubt we'll have now that in an instant replay right now. And knowing half the battle. Instant replay. Knowing is half the battle. Um, that M10, he, he made short work of that uh, Oswin. I don't see how if that Oswin did much damage, really, it, in the, the first it place. It had at least two kills. It took it, it, I mean, it, at it least pushed two. some troops off. It made the MG retreat, which, um, where was the MG... No, yeah, MG retreated. Made the MG retreat. Uh, what were their... Uh, Bobby, Joe, Herman, and Renfield are still kicking about. They're all still rocking at 13, 9, and 5 apiece. Yeah, two two of them uh, have veterancy. That's uh, not bad. You know, that's not bad for, for a sniper. For three snipers. Mm. That's micromanagement, you know? That's a bit. There's a Panzer said, IV chilling um, Yeah, Panzer IV just chilling. Uh... American snipers obviously rank up through XP rather than Wehrmacht who buy their experience. So I'd imagine having all these Volksgrenadiers running around, you know, easy fodder. That's just um, like, um, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of things to shoot at. I think they're worth one experience each, and rank one's worth eight that's... experience. So you kill eight Volksgrenadiers, you yeah. get a medal. I think a good way and that's... to look at the veterancy between the Allies and the Wehrmacht who buy theirs is to look at sexual relationships. Some people okay. earn them, okay. and some people, you know, some of us have to resort to paying for it. And the thing and is, I, wait, you, when it comes down to it, uh, sorry, no sorry. one is less of a man because of it. That's just what I want to say. There's another well, Goliath on the field. Uh, there you go. I was going to say, you know, some people buy their veterancy, uh, some people earn their veterancy, and some people don't get any veterancy <laughs> at all. You're right. I forgot to talk about the most pertinent aspects of it. Veterancy. It's the people who you might say are premature in their in their deaths. I don't, you know, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. There's a Panzer IV fighting some airborne. That's happening. Mm. Let's let's um, look at this the munition game. point. Munition point has been captured right by Swan Lake, but he's getting attacked by the uh, flock of uh, Volks Grenadiers. That M10 in the face of the oh Jesus Christ! Did oh you see that body? That M10. is the most illegal move in the history of wrestling that I have ever seen. There's another M10. Holy shit, how many Panzerfaust did that take? They just fired the Panzerfaust. They can do that. I think that was about 100 munitions. That was impressive. I enjoyed that. Still, um, still enjoyed no it so much that I'm going to take a, a quick hiatus to clean up. So please, can you take over for a, a few seconds? Yeah, I'm here. I'm back. I never left. I'm taking over. It's uh, a coup. A coup d'etat. Coup de grace. Mm. Mm. Are you done? Are you back? I'm back. Say I'm back. It wasn't very thing. much. <laughs> no, it wasn't very much. It never, never is. Goliath just chilling out near that fuel point, probably waiting for them to try and cap it. Fuels, and, you know, late game is a fun commodity to have. You know, you might get some yeah, tanks out of yeah, it. Yeah, I guess. I think, I think manpower is probably more crucial late game. But uh, we've got some engineers getting close. It could be a 125 power. munition surprise, and there it goes. Oh, my God. The humanity. An engineer squad, I think, or an engineer pioneer squad, about 120 manpower, and that cost 125 munitions, so that probably was not worth it. Uh, especially seeing as the Wehrmacht, he's, he's floating quite a lot of... Oh, I take that back, he was floating a lot of... Um, he, he did... A lot of fuel, not so much. There's a panther coming out. He did deprive the Allies and ensure himself... Fuel for a little bit longer, right? Um, but could he have done that yeah, for cheaper? Yeah. I mean, we could evaluate that. Um, we could. We could, but that's probably beyond our budget. Beyond. <laughs> I'm glad you talked about budget. We hold the initiative. Um, mm. Because I think whenever, well, tell us. whenever anyone sees something 
if they're watching our shoutcasts and they feel like maybe in some way we're inadequate, chalk it up to our budget. That's all I have to mm. say. And I was going to talk about budget. I was going to actually talk you about the person who edits our edits our shoutcast, as it's the film. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, budget. <laughs> Uh, tell us a bit about yourself, Steve. You're the editor, aren't you? You're the one who I, makes all the magic happen. Well, I'm the one... I mean, that's, that could be two different things. The editor and the person who makes the magic happen. Um, in this case... They're You're the, definitely the, not the latter. The latter. As opposed to the former? Yes. Yeah, as you're, is yeah. correct. Big blob of Volk's gonna do this down there. Um, editing. Yeah, we got. We have fun. We have fun. I am spent so much time in my basement on the computer anyway. I've got that second screen... I've got one hand mm. free for the mouse. I've gotten pretty good with my left hand. I might as well be editing, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm. I mean, your logic is flawless, and as you'd expect from a man who's schooled in uh, philosophy such as yourself. Uh, yeah, that's right. Well, you're also schooled in philosophy. Why don't you tell us about f that? Tell us. Well, Do you know what my well, experience in philosophy was? I'm just gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna be straight up with you. My experience in philosophy, I sat at the back of my class, and I used to have my laptop open, and I'd play Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Yeah. Every and class. I think that's a um, phenomenal analogy for the way we approach metaphysics, and the way metaphysics yes. very tangibly influences our lives. Roller Coaster Ty Ty Tycoon 2. Also, as a side note, the there is another Goliath. Chilling out at that same fuel point. Just chilling. Good. If at first you succeed, try and succeed again. Mm. Um, oh my god, and dude. I have a feeling that Sun Tzu said that. You touched again. Sorry, for the first time, I think. You, t you and you're touching. On, um. <laughs> you know what annoyed me about cartoons, right? Like, like you think Tom and Jerry. Um. Tom was. Tom's the cat. Like a Tom cat. Tom the cat. He wants, oh, usually he wants to maybe kill Jerry, that M10, one M10 stand. Maybe eat him, possibly, that's his, his um, prerogative. He I comes mean, up right. with a scheme, right. he comes up with a scheme. Wily Coyote does this as well. He comes up with a scheme, a plan, he gets something from Acme or whatever. He enacts the scheme, it fails, but hear this. All right. It normally fails for some really abstract, absurd, fluke reason. It doesn't fail because inherently the plan or the device is flawed, though sometimes it is, that's fair. But usually, I think the majority of the times you can say the plan isn't itself flawed, something happens, the cog in the works, uh, cog? Wait, cogs? Something happens Enemy to the cogs? Yeah. Something goes wrong. And instead of trying a plan which looked very possibly to succeed again, they give up and move on. And I always feel like if they just tried it again, maybe it would work. Especially when they don't try it again so many times, the Jerry and the Roadrunner would never expect the same thing twice. There you go. There you go. And so if you ever... There you go. That's it. Sorry. I, was, I just went to the bathroom. So I'm back. Did I miss anything? No. No, you didn't. There's, good. There's a panther on the field. Yeah, <laughs> there's a good, there's snipers. Yeah. The snipers, man, are still alive. Bobby Joe there, sitting on double veterancy. Renfield and Herman, just reminding you their names. They're there. They got one veterancy. Each. Renfield and Herman. Was it Renfield? Yeah. Two tank hunters. Renfield. Renfield. He's a big fan of the tank hunters. Well, if, he is. if we take a, take kind of an account of who has what. Oh, that looks like a Goliath that is going in for like a bit Goliath. of a cheeky. Oh, oh, oh! oh. And that did nothing. Oh. Ooh. Well, damage, damage. I damage. think a Panzerfaust would probably finish one of these bastards off. For the American, he's got three snipers, airborne squads, nearly dead rifle squads, and three M10s. Whereas the um, the Wehrmacht has got, I think, three Volks, Ooh. a double Panther now. Actually, he's got I think we're going to see that full out. Volk squad go to the snipers. Oh. Yeah, there it goes. Didn't get, didn't Amazing. Get these M10s showing their rears, two of them, to the Panther, but not minding too much. I don't think we're going to trying to do a bit of strafing. I don't think it's going to turn out well. They're all really poorly injured. Well, that panther... They well, might get the panther. I was going to say, the panther's nearly going to drop. But or no, not. he's he's angry. That's one fucked off he's panther. Angry. He's angry. Wow. Oh, That's all three are gone. Panther. Oh, my God. And that uh, certainly went the way of the uh, the Germans. One Volk squad made up of children and old men. 
expendable. However, those three M10s were probably piloted or driven by uh, Winston Churchill, Joseph Stalin, and FDR. the American dude. Yeah, that's the one. Well, he was president. I don't know. Truman, uh, what year is this? Truman could have been president. You don't know, I mean, don't this, know. This, this would have been George Bush Sr., wouldn't it? George Bush Sr.? Senior? No? Yeah, he was pre he was a president. There you go. He was a president. You're right. Was he the president? For, I don't know. For a while, I, I think he was the president. Oh, that's true. I think that's Again, a com Kanye's observation. Comes with being a president. Being the president. Is that you get to be? And, and, okay. And that's the well, let's that's the let's thing move about, off this top. I, well, that's I the think thing this about is probably a, a, a landmine, and we should probably move away from the topic of American presidents. Because Fair enough. Um, it's it's very likely that America won't even be a country in ten years from now, right. and, and then we, want we will be executed as infidels. Or alternatively, speaking. America won't be a country, and we want people to be watching our shoutcast on a six-year-old game in ten years when it's only sixteen years old, and we want that longevity, right? Only sixteen-year-olds. Hmm. <laughs> There, we just saw a whole paratrooper, uh, paratrooper squad gone. Possibly, uh, gonna, this one's gonna make it out. Close, though, close. Uh, you know, it doesn't, so, it doesn't feel good. So, Steve, it doesn't feel good. I want you to tell me the uh, the Wehrmacht. They've just got their second rank on their tanks, uh, second infantry, which now means they're better against infantry. The American, he has uh, an airborne squad with two blokes in it and three snipers. Who is going to win at this point? Well. I mean, that's a tough question. Who? Because what does... First, you have to evaluate. Let's define what winning is. Winning. Winning yeah. Yeah. in no, this I'm scenario. No, I'm glad you asked that, actually. Winning in this scenario, I think we look at it as as being opposed to losing. Right? Winning and there's losing. And there's winners and there's losers. Mm -hmm. At the end of this game, there'll be a winner of the game, as we define it. Well, once we define game. We'll get into that. And the loser of the game. Of the same game as previously defined in relationship to the winner, and I think that's that's all a fair thing to say. Yes. We haven't talked about victory yes. points at all. They're pretty even. There, we talked about it. Do we need to talk about victory points? Let's talk about it for a second. Um, we did. If your victory points get to zero, you lose. You lose by and in a, in a pre, you know, in a we'll define that sort of lot. We'll define it later. There's another Goliath. He's been out, so he's just he's just been birthed. Already he has um, more or less eclipsed all of mankind's progress over the last 2,000 years. He's already got to, I think, therefore I am. And he's probably sentient. You know what? And what does he do with his sentience? He sits in a crater and becomes invisible. Yeah. And I would, I would challenge anyone out there right now, anyone who's listening, to go outside, sit in the crater... And try and become invisible. And I don't mean in the kind of Steve Mongler, invisible only to females. I mean invisible to everyone. I think I'm invisible to Do everyone. Do it. Um, Who said that? <laughs> invisible doesn't mean inaudible. Exaudible. And audible. The point is, we haven't talked about the absence of a third, a third uh, collaborator. We, and what's interesting is, actually, and I, if anyone listened to the last Shoutcast... He actually <laughs> had an absence uh, part way through the game. And the point we're trying to get across is that we haven't heard from him since. So if you've seen anything or heard anything, I think we'll get a photo of him up on the screen and a number that you can call. Um, we'd like to know that he's okay. Thanks. Thank he you. goes by uh, the following names. Clockwork, uh, Danny, or DRD, which could stand for a multitude <laughs> of... Things, um, and if you find which him, we might have up on screen. If you find him, don't call the police. Um, he wouldn't appreciate it. Just call us. Call us. Good. Well, moving back to the game, we have the uh, Axis column of steel chilling just above the uh, the kind of river, uh, which I like to nickname the Birth Canal. <laughs> yep. I mean, do I need to say anything else? I think that more or less sums up the game. Uh, double airborne squads, snipers running down the south part of the map, looking for adventure. Will they find adventure? Who knows? Who knows? And war is the obviously the, the third great adventure. 
Um, the first being procreation, and the second being procreation with oneself. That's, so, that's um, obviously not a chronological order. Which of order. these? Which of these? No, not often. It normally goes two, then one, and then three because of one. <laughs> but uh, which type of adventure will they find? Who knows? I am thinking probably the first two. I have been known to uh, <laughs> to be wrong. You know what we haven't seen at all? And we haven't seen what? Umsum's baby call in any 57mm tank guns, right? Air drop them in. He's and actually, I just wanted to. I want to. I want to hold you there. Uh, yeah, do it. Do it. The Wehrmacht have gone Terra Doctor, and I should have said this before. And we've got something on the field. It's a King Tiger. Holy bejesus! Holy shit! King Tiger. King Tiger. King Tiger. It's a big tank. It's big. He's a big one. That needs to be named. Does it? Okay. And I'm going to call this King. I'm going to call this King Tiger Steve's mum. <laughs> Steve's mum's on the field. No, nice. I think Steve's this is probably mom. GG. I'm GG. actually going to be really disappointed if we don't see those snipers die. There was a strafing run. It looked pretty successful. Kind of. I mean, it well, did it? Oh, oh my it god! No, no, is it? Those. Come on, get some. Get some more sniper shots off. I, I want to. Oh, I want to see that Knight's nice crossholders die. We now see all three snipers: Herman, uh, Renfield, and Bobby Joe are all at double vet veterancy. Mm. They, I mean, they've been basically the only, the only real uh, input the the Americans have had in this game. They, just, I mean, they're as you saw, instantly take out that Volk squad, keeping those VPs. Uncapped, one VP uncapped. But um, mm. but I mean, sorry. So take, going back to what I said, basically the only real hand in card in the oh, hand. Oh, here comes the a American. Goliath. He's gonna go. Is he gonna get anyone? No, he reverses. No, but there's disappointing. Oh, the snipers taking shots at him. Anyway, what I was trying to say is, snipers maybe not the most effective thing when your opponent is going for blobs of Volksgrenadiers and a King Tiger. There you go. I said it. Thank you for saying that. Um, I mean, it just makes. It, I wonder what was going through his head. This game. This game. He was just having fun, maybe? But how can he have fun in a game? Of. Uh, sorry, I, st I stopped listening for a second. I stopped talking. But, um, I was going to say, from past experience, I'm kind of glad I'm not talking. Well, the tanks are rolling to the base. There's a 57 gun on the field now. A bit late, some might argue. A bit late. And also, I, th I feel better, better late than never, but in fact, in this case, never would have sufficed. Never would have saved three people's lives. Well, Steve's mum is in, and I'd say this game is more or less over. The, uh, the Yanks have very little to They've got three counter. snipers. Yeah, three snipers. Um, I would recommend those snipers quietly leave the field. And uh, to get a full engineer squad, that's pretty simple. But between them, the snipers got oh, how many? 33 plus 22, 55 kills. Not bad. That's a lot of a lot of families which now won't have fathers. Um, so they should be very proud of themselves. <laughs> very proud of themselves. Let's um. We never even saw. We never even saw. Uh, I need. To really even try and counter the snipers, right? He pretty single-minded, and I think that paid off. For him. Yeah. I just want to commend the uh, one of the Panthers, uh, obviously recipient, as we've already discussed, of 50 cal's kill of the week, damaging two uh, two M10 tank hunters and taking um, damage on the third. Wait, is so, that? I, I mean, congratulations, sir. Is that a kill of the week? That's, that's like a kill of the week seems like a one-off thing, right? A one, like an instant moment where where there's death. Well, in active. I, I mean, mean, hang it on, hang like on. Sounds like you're saying killer. If of a the kill week, of a week, right? a killer of the week. But killer but of the week. Consider, consider a, a shell blows up, say quote, six unquote. ranges, and that's that's six men who are killed, but it's still kill of the week. I think I think a few M10s. 
I'm just saying, let's say for purposes we were going to cut to a single screenshot. How would we pick that screenshot? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about the person who's going to pick the screenshot? I don't think you have. Uh, it's probably going to be you, isn't it? It might be. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay. Alright. John! I'm not sure what you said, but I agree, I agree with you. I wonder if, uh... I wonder how this game's going to go. I don't know. Actually, that King Tiger might drop. If those, uh, oh if those... God. If those rifles could... Oh. A firestorm? painfully horrible. On the, oh my god. Holy shit. Well, they do They just got a firestorm here with that AT gun. I kind of want to see this King Tiger would drop. I don't know if it will. That one parachute just doesn't seem that interested. This is... I mean, it would be funny. There's the GG from I Need Part 2. Will it be... returned? Well, there he goes. He's gone. What more is there to say? Well, actually, I would argue there's a lot more to say, seeing as our commentary generally has very little to do with the game in the first place. But um, I just hope there's enough left to say to, you know, take up at least one more week, because this is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, it, you know. All right. Well, I think we'll leave it at that. I enjoyed that game. I, you know... Um, I enjoyed the game, but I feel like I feel like I and I could have enjoyed it more if maybe it hadn't been so one-sided. Well, no. okay. I think you want to enjoy these games more. I think next week, instead of being Thirsty Thursday, we'll call it uh, Smacked Up Thursdays. I don't. Um, because the uh, midweek heroin rush. <laughs> I get it. Touche, sir. Touche. All I'm asking for is when someone pushes. Then you push back in a reciprocating fashion. It's kind of like the reach around of the battlefield, I guess. I'm going to be honest with you, Steve. I think we'll save that joke for next week because okay. no one's really going to be listening at this so point of the video. They didn't hear that. I think that was cut out. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think people generally listen to 40 minutes of us talking. So I think we'll uh, we'll end it at that. This has been Thirsty Thursday. I'm 50 Cal Barrett. I'm um <coughs> I'm Steve Mongler. I'm in my basement. I'm hydrated. That's nice. Well, you know, touche, whatever. Good night. Good night. You, what's in Phoenix? Why it's your mama, Steve? Get the axe.